Hello viewers. I'd like to tell you about my new favorite channel. Sabina Hassenfelder is a physicist and a gifted lecturer whose videos cross over from physics to literature to philosophy to music, stimulating the minds of anyone who watches, no matter what they specialize in. She talks about the number of researchers going up while the rate of scientific achievement goes down. And her delivery is twice as fast as mine, even though I'm a native English speaker. Tossing in trendy anecdotes, because that's what the brain demands. This past Sunday, I performed at a concert where our maestro demonstrated hand-over-hand -hand music, which I don't understand, but his musical monkey shines I do understand. This doesn't just demonstrate that physics is cool, it bridges the gap between the left and right sides of the brain, revealing all those things are connected. Sabina is the first critical scientist I've seen who knows that rhetoric trumps science, and philosophy trumps science. Most specialists don't know that. I'm outnumbered by experts in every field of ecology, who expect people to melt before their facts because they don't know anything else. Strategy is not a physical science. If you don't know it exists, you just go after anyone. A fundamental flaw in critical thinking is the method is what matters, but only if you're on the right side. Skeptics don't like being scrutinized. When objectivity is used against a scientific argument by the other side, they no longer recognize it, and therefore their mantra, all facts are facts, is unsustainable. The example, the critical method is what the happy consumer does to get his job done, is a truism that belongs in one of the Dick and Jane novels. Intelligence is not what makes someone right or wrong. Specialists are often confused by simple arguments they consider to be a blunt instrument. And, she knows, observational data is not textbook data. How many times has a biologist said something was a hoax? So, if they had been the observer, would they have thrown a textbook at it? revealing their answer was not on the mark in the first place. This is why I always encourage people to challenge an expert. You might be better at something than they are, let's say social skills. Someone who uses both technical science and social science can accomplish anything. In Sabina's video, physicists claim they can send particles into the past. She critiques an article in New Scientist that has to do with retrocausality, the idea that particles seem to know we're watching them. But some particles are immortal. You can't send them into the past because they're already there, unaware that time is passing. Plus, they are constantly moving anyway. It's like asking, how would you move a planet? How would you harness it in the first place? would it cease to be a particle once it's been domesticated? Since I'm not a particle physicist, I'd like to suggest that if the writers don't understand the complexity, maybe this could be a demonstration of how to challenge someone who's smarter than you are. If I'm not mistaken, the size and nature of particles requires overwhelming observational bias from us. A Hadron Collider has to smash atoms just for us to see them by the trail they leave behind, which in their natural state they wouldn't normally do. We have to build something the size of a rocket engine, actually that wouldn't be a bad idea, to be able to see something that's in your own hand and in the bolts that hold the collider together. The observational bias is greater than it is with distant stars. We've never seen a quark. I'd like to be corrected on this. I know there are photos of uranium atoms. What would particle physics be without all this artifice? Would we still be saying, if you close your eyes, the cat is both alive and dead because it hasn't decided yet? So what I usually ask is, what is missing from the discussion? And there are two things. 
a disloyal perspective which isn't unscientific or uninformed, it's just dispassionate. And discussions about time travel are not steeped in time travel lore, which, as I said, is observational data. It's not the thing of which we don't speak. So what if you just walked through a CIA-style time device carrying a basket of matter? Or what if you just teleported one particle into the past, a photon like they've done between islands in the Pacific? So my question for Sabina is, supposedly the CIA program to collect images from the Gettysburg Address and other time periods, where you literally step out of our time into another time, not only contradicts scientism, but the motive seems so... human? It doesn't even consider the goals of particle physics. In closing, I'd like to say our objective observations are not limited to any subject. Just because someone is well-spoken doesn't mean a lot of work doesn't go into these. More material ends up on the cutting room floor than what is said. And most of what a trained physicist says isn't on the leading edge of physics or the things they discuss behind closed doors. Sabina would say, Philosophically, you could believe anything or you could believe nothing. Make people think.